Hey boys and girls, uh, welcome to Monroe Live. <clears throat> We've got ourselves a um, Kia EV9. This is a top of the line version. And, um, and so Sue and I have had it for a bit and we're gonna talk a little bit about what we like and maybe things that we don't much care for. So the uh, first thing I'd like to do is thank the, um, thank the folks over at Kia for giving us a press vehicle. It was very generous of you. Um, hopefully you won't be too upset about doing that <clears throat> because uh, we did find a few things we don't like. Hey everybody, Monroe Live is brought to you today by Babbel. Babbel is one of the top language learning apps in the world and it's scientifically proven to help you learn a new language in just three weeks. Babbel's lessons are crafted by more than 650 language teachers and they're designed to prepare you for practical conversations that you can apply to your travel, your work, or everyday life. Now, Monroe is a worldwide organization and our clients come from a variety of industries and countries. It's important for us to make our customers feel welcome and we do that by learning some keywords and phrases in their languages. Guten Tag. My name is Sandy. Wie geht's Ihnen? No matter what language, or why you're looking into them, Babbel has you covered. Their business courses are tailored to teach you to navigate the workplace in a new language, but that's not all. Babbel also offers lessons in grammar, culture, dialects, and so much more. You can even learn in the form of podcasts, games, and live classes with real language teachers. Click the link in the description and get 60% off your Babbel subscription. Please let us know in the comments what language you decided to learn. Um, I'm gonna start off and I'm gonna tell you right now, I do like the front end of the Kia. Most of the, uh, most of the products that Kia and Hyundai put out, I like, I like the aggressive styling. Um, I like the fact that these gaps are fabulous um, and everything really to me is about as good as it can get, except for I don't care for this paint. The paint I job. like I like the color. Well, I'm not I don't a think fan it's, of blue. I, it's, I think I neither am I. I don't like blue. But I, this color seems to 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 flow very good with this piano black exterior. I actually like it. I mm. like the styling. What's interesting to me about this car is I guess this is an SUV, and yet it kind of is vanish, right? It's like a van yeah. SUV. It's, it's like the profile on the side view, definitely more van. If it had a sliding door, it'd be a van, right? But right. because it's a four door, that's a really big rear door. That it is. is a huge rear door, but that gives you the access to the third row. But yeah. definitely from the back end, if you were to look, you'd say, mm, that's probably a van until you went to the side. So, oh, it's an SUV. So I guess it's that long roof that gives you that, that van appearance. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of things to like about uh, the look of it. Yeah. Uh, I think it, like I say, I think it looks aggressive. Um, there was a lot of things that, uh, that I liked about driving it. Um, one that I did, well, let's, let's get rid of that. We'll, we'll come back to it. But the seats are very comfortable for me. Right. Sue, not so much, but uh, for me, the seats were comfortable. I love the little features in here that, uh, I really like the uh, the cup holders. These things are uh, kind of cool. I like anything that um, kind of uh, looks a little different. And uh, so you push the little button here, and it uh, it uh, displays all of the the little uh, place that you're going to put your cups and whatnot. But then if you've got one of these monster cups, I don't. But uh, if you do, yeah, you can fit it in there. The big Slurpee or whatever it's called. <clears throat> yeah. So, uh, so I, I did, I can appreciate that. The, um, the instrument panel and whatnot, um, I like the long lean look. However, a lot of it in the center you can't see, uh, which didn't really do much for me. Yeah, I think the, uh, the I guess what I, I, when I first got, now I, I, I've never been in a Kia, so I have no idea where things should be placed. I only have a reference of ice cars and electric cars. And so you first get into this car and you, your obvious issue is you don't know how to turn it on because that lower print, that lower stock is hidden by the steering wheel crossbar here so you can't find it easily. It should have been on the dash or some other place. So mm -hmm. that to me is was super 
I, if you wouldn't have this told is, me, I wouldn't have found it, I don't think. Yeah. I'd be several minutes before I would have found it. Well, it's down here. Right here. Okay, and this is the little selector selector for uh, drive and reverse. And this is couldn't be in a worse spot. Anyhow, so uh, it's got a lot of, what you have to do is harken back to the good old days. That's why um, uh, when Sue couldn't find out how to turn it off, it's not like a modern car. This has got the old fashioned, see Stop. how that stick moves. So at the end of the day, um, that's kind of like what's going on. There's a lot of things here that are geared toward um, older people. Mm -hmm. oh, geez, and I'm old. Okay, so people who um, are not familiar with electric vehicles, mm -hmm. and um, I will tell you, that stick right here mm -hmm. costs a lot of money, and I would ditch that in a heartbeat because you don't, you don't really understand if the car is on or off. And, uh, it's just and to difficult me, to see. This should, there's no reason to have a start button, none. So, um, I have a whole bunch of Teslas and we've had all kinds of other trucks and cars and quite frankly there's no reason for a start stop button. This is a remnant of the good old days where we used to put the key in and turn it on. You don't need to do that anymore. You just put it on your phone and it's on. So that, that to me um, is a problem along with all the other buttons. Oh, there's so many buttons. I, I, I soon yeah. damn near killed us yesterday <laughs> <laughs> trying to find out how to do all the things so well, there's so many things to to process in this car so when i first got in the my number one issue is i have a very short seated height so in order for me to get that heads up display my seat is extraordinarily high to absolutely see all the miles per hour in there so i'm sitting like super high i i just did the steering wheel accordingly but it, i don't know it, it seems like I don't do you do, when you did this probably it was perfect for you right but I'm perfect yeah. from the butt up so my, my legs are short your legs <laughs> are from here to long, China but but I'm very yeah. short seated height so it's that was kind of weird so I'm sitting really high um it's kind of strange and there's there's so many buttons it's sort of like it's a it's a con, it's like a conservative ultra conservative EV with all this all these am amenities and buttons I've there's just buttons for everything and I'm a little bit overwhelmed being now that I've I'm used to drive an electric car like a Tesla or my Rivian this is there's an abundance of of buttons here um to me it's well, a little let's, bit let's just confusing. talk about you know because <clears throat> really what we're trying to do is we're trying to get people to get into electric vehicles yeah. and uh, one of the ways that we can get into them mm -hmm. is if we can reduce the price so you're looking yep. at nearly a grand sitting right here that I don't even need. Yeah. I can put all those buttons and whatnot either on the screen or, or basically with a couple of uh, a couple of buttons on the steering wheel. I mean, I have no stocks in my uh, in my um, uh, Cybertruck. None. Even uh, even the turn signals. All I do is move my thumb up and down for right and left, and on the far side. It has four buttons, but and a, and a little uh, what do you call it? A tractor ball, uh, yeah, a traction ball. Mm. But these, I mean, holy moly! It just it was like incredible to try and figure out what was what. So let's talk about something I do love, absolutely love that heads-up display. Yes. That is a really good heads-up display. A lot of the ones that I've seen in the past are uh, a waste of money and time. I love that one. That that's brilliant. I can see that. Um, and yeah. the HVAC system is it's phenomenal. The it's ride, as quiet as the, a tomb. Yeah, and the ride, <clears throat> nice soft ride quality. Very, yeah. very enjoyable to drive. Really, except for like I put so there's drive modes. We got the eco and we got the normal sport and snow. I think, and so we tried out the eco <laughs> and the normal, which was. You Somebody, know, a yawner. Yeah. <laughs> but in sport mode, you, you know, you hit the gas and you can actually feel the responsiveness of the torque in the car. So that, that was really nice. Of course, it didn't try snow mode, but that, I'm assuming that just engages the two motors and four-wheel drive or something mm. like that. So, The other yeah. thing we noticed, too, is when you move it through the different modes, oh. you get a significantly uh, greater amount of, um, amount of mileage. When you yeah. put it in eco, um, it's not. I would never drive it like that. I'll just go and buy more, yep. more electricity. But, <clears throat> but it was, uh, it was, it was a lot. 
when you uh, when you drop it down. So for those people on a budget, yeah. first off, why are you buying a seventy-eight thousand dollar? Is this seventy-eight thousand for this? It's about seventy-five. Yeah, so yeah. seventy-eight. With taxes. Anyhow, um, seventy-eight thousand dollar car, I pretty pretty much probably don't need to worry about um, buying electricity. But uh, but the steering wheel feels good for me. Mm -hmm. It's big in diameter. Yeah. I yeah. like that. Yeah. I like the lines that are in here. <clears throat> Normally, I don't care much for chrome, but it yeah, seems to it subtle. seems to it's subtle and it, it works out. It also has some uh, some little uh, mood lights that uh, that you yeah. uh, you can turn on, and so that that kind of is uh, that's all good stuff. Um, my big problem uh, again, this stock was I got in it as well, and I figured ah it's probably got a start button, and uh, but could I find it? Not a chance because I can't see it. See, here's your vision coming in like this. This blocks that. Yeah, you can't see it. <clears throat> so I just, and everything there, I can do, I, I, I can get rid of that. I don't need to make that happen. To me, I think what happened was there's some guy that um, in Kia that said, hey, let's just use some of our existing um, uh, componentry and put that in the car and look at all the money we'll save, tooling money. I'm not a fan of tooling money savings uh, because what happens is everybody from that point forward is going to do nothing but rebuy the same tooling. So uh, that's a, another conversation. But I, I do like um, the the view here is perfect. Uh, I think it's great. The visibility is great. <clears throat> I don't like rear view mirrors, but this can give you a rear view mirror as well. I think, right? We had the rear view mirror. That's when you do the backup yeah, when cameras. I do the back you can, oh, yeah. the backup cameras. I like the backup camera with the double tracking so you know where, where both your front wheels and your rear wheels are going when you're backing up. Yep. I, I like that too. Well, yeah. I well know let's you, dive into it. I know it. you like this driving mode, but the, and I do like this. I don't know if you need eco and normal, but okay, fine. I'm not sure I know the exact difference between the two, but having your seat mode change with the drive mode. Oh yeah, that I'm not sure that it's an interesting feature, but personally I yeah, well, you I didn't like describe my seat. It. Well, your seat like when you put it in sport mode, I think I think this this lowers a little bit and and the uh, the wings come in uh, to hug you a little bit more. Personally, I I don't want my seat to change when I'm driving, just leave it alone, but every mode you put in it does something different and I think it's kind of unnecessary, interesting, but unnecessary. Well, it, obviously it's roomy. Yeah, this is really, the, I is. like the back seat here. Wow. I've thrown a lot of rocks at a variety of different car companies for um, ingress and egress on the back seat. But I will tell you that, um, that there's no complaints here. This is uh, really nice. I like the grab handles where they are and everything. It's cute. Here. Yeah. It's got a lot of uh, oh, storage things. in a tray. That, that's kind of yeah. cute. It has, uh, th you know, a standard like minivan kind of situation. It has yeah. the abundance of cup holders and the rear pockets, and you know. And I love. Okay, I actually do like the screens. I'm, I think that's awesome. Yeah, I so think that's if good it's, too. Because if this Especially is sort of kids. like the minivan and the travel kind of vehicle, that that's a nice amenity, and it has all the rear temperature and it. It has everything. I mean, that's not except an issue. for one thing. I, I would have thought that there would have been, um, you know, well, some inter something infotainment, infotainment for the kitties. So this is the little button for uh, for us to get into the back seat, and you can see that this thing folds and gets out of your way. Okay, that's good. So now I'm going to get into the back seat because that's the only way I could possibly do this. <clears throat> and that really hurt. <clears throat> And, <clears throat> okay, so I'm in. Okay, so now I uh, push the button and now it will crush my knees. Like, you know, that's what's supposed to happen. Okay, now it's time for me to get out, right? Yeah. Push, push the button. The button. <clears throat> okay. And now oh, I'm yeah. going to try and get out. Without... Watch this. Where do I grab? Oh, yeah, right here. And what happens? Oh, I'm going to get trapped into the back again. This button is in absolutely the worst position ever. I, I get can't it. get in and out of here. Oh, boy. <clears throat> Unless tough... I go around. That's, so, I think it's better if you get out that way, yeah? And that's what I'm going to do. But this is, um, 
this is one of the things that somebody should have thought of. That button. Thank you so much, sweetie. I wanted to give you yeah, more I room. Yeah, I know. Nope. That, that just kind of like... Anyhow, so this button, it needs to go somewhere else. I would suggest down here so that if you want to get out of the back seat, you can grab the back, the second row seat. The uh, frunk is... Uh, I think you can, uh, you can put a, um, a wallet in it that doesn't have much. The rear section here um, isn't very big, but um, uh, really and truly when you've got uh, uh, three rows of seats, and by the way, somebody keeps telling me that this is a seven row car, it's, it's not, or seven seater. It's not at all, it's, it's six. Um, and, uh, and it's comfortable six, kind of. That's for easy the enough. kids, I think. So six six people can get in here relatively simple, and um, and like I say, there's uh, there's uh, plenty of room to to put. That's nice. Uh, yeah, that is. That's nice. all auto, auto I didn't folding. See that. Okay, that's kind of sweet. <clears throat> that's nice. So you don't have to like go yeah. to the second door and get that. Yeah. So that's nice. And then this is not so ergonomically bad. Not bad. Not, not bad. We'll see. Uh oh. You're pulling it at the same time as Oh okay. Not you just get oh okay, all right. That's oops. Maybe that's not supposed to happen. <laughs> mm. Let's try that again. Oh what are you doing? you're wrecking the thing. Okay, that's it. <laughs> Sue's, uh, Sue's been eliminated here. <laughs> okay. I'm Let's go look at the frunk. <clears throat> well, there's nothing there. So anyway, all in all, um, there's a lot of good points here. Um, and I, I do kind of like the styling and whatnot. Yeah. But um, there's some stuff that can be done to really make this uh, a much finer vehicle and probably maybe kick out a few grand. Uh, from the from the price and actually give customers a better a better vehicle so anything else you'd like to say there no, I it, honestly if you know if I didn't see the Kia badge I wouldn't know this was a Kia so I think they've done a pretty good job with the styling it's very nicely appointed the right quality is good it's good value for the dollar but as a you know a person who's driving someone like a Tesla with you know it just Minimal. does not have a lot of the controls. Uh, I'm just, I'm a little bit, I, I was a little bit confused by the number of controls, but for somebody who's a new entry to the EV market, I think this would be a very familiar car for them. I think they'd be quite comfortable in it, and I think it'd be a good transition vehicle. Yeah. Well, anyway, back to the look. This looks like a Kia to me. Really? I, uh, yeah, absolutely. I was surprised. The aggressive, uh, aggressive look is kind of Kia, so. Oh, I like it. <clears throat> well, I like the look. <clears throat> I think it'd be better in white or, <clears throat> or bright red. Uh, I think it would stand out like a fire engine, but what do I know? Anyway, um, thanks for watching. Um, and again, thanks to the uh, Kia folks for letting us uh, borrow a vehicle. Yeah. And uh, any parting words? Good job, actually. I, I do like the I do like the vehicle. I think it's 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 a fine entry point for Kia in the SUV EV market. I think they did a good job. Um, but there's going to be a lot more competition in the near future, so we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll we'll be talking to you again. Bye now.